start. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, no, I don't record it. We got Orca recording it. Yes, we do. They're right there. Yep. Yep. Okay, so we're, we're all set. All right, everyone's got the agenda. I ask for approval of the agenda. Any changes? I make a motion to approve it. Donna, I mentioned you were going to fill us in on the earmark. You wanted to add that. Can we add that under other business if time allows? Well, okay. I'd like to hear about it. Sure. I'll put it under under other business. Can you turn your volume down while you do speakers? Volume on your slide, too. So that way we can't have two sets. I can't hear them off of your speaker. Mute your speakers and I'll turn this up. I, I don't think that works. I've got an echo. If, it, if it's that you're going to have to come share my computer, Stephen, then that's what it's going to take. You can't have an echo. Sorry, I have to be able to talk. Yeah, I just need to be able to hear and it's just can't hear off of your computer. Let's see if this is. Donna, I don't think we have an echo on our end. I can incre increase my volume if that will help. Turn yours all the way off. Somebody, uh, Sally, you want to speak to Stephen, see if he can hear you? Can you hear me? OK. All right, actually, uh, Sally, I don't need a motion for that. OK. I added the if people will accept the agenda. There's no objections to adding the earmark under other business. The agenda will be accepted as proposed. Public comment. Anyone would like to talk about something not on the agenda? I have the agenda, but I think it's everything is on the agenda. Okay. And now we have the approval of the June 10th, 2021 minutes. I would entertain a motion to accept the June 10th. No Second. And the move was Paul? Jim. Okay. Jim. 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 No, Jim, J I M. Jim's motion. And the second was Sally. Uh, me. Sally. We're going to have really short minutes. <laughs> Brent, last minute, is not in town today. <laughs> Okay, and then we have the August 12th minutes. There was one change sent to me that indeed in the August 12th minutes at the very end, it lists the next meeting as September 10th and it should have been the 9th. Other than that change, is there any others proposed? Nope, I'll make a motion to accept them as amended. Thank you, Sally. Second? Second. Second, Kim, I think you were first. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye to pass the August 12th minutes. Aye. 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 Shake your hand. <laughs> Any opposed? Great. Now we need to ratify all the motions passed within the August 12th meeting. And that includes a motion to ratify approval to pay. There was a payment to Paco, to me, and to Brent. They were outlined in your August 12th packet and they were outlined here in the agenda. It's kind of a moot point to ratify these things right now because tonight's warrant meeting didn't get warned either. So yeah, it did. Okay. It's not on the board. Whoever's speaking, I can't I can't hear who's ever was okay. Speaking. Uh Steve it's saying that it didn't get posted, but I called and, and spoke. I emailed both Jody and Mary, and they said they posted it. So I don't know where it went, but they posted. I talked to them Tuesday. So we are ratifying a vote to ratify the things that were approved within the August 12th meeting. I am registering that Stephen is opposing that because he says he didn't see the posting on the board. I just went and checked the board and it's not posted. I don't, he, both women told me I confirmed it. Donna, does, can we approve it all at once or do we need to do them each individually? 
No, we can do all the, and, and the other ratification was the acceptance of the Telebeat report and final payment. So you can do one motion to ratify the motions that were voted on and approved on August 12th. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. I will note Stephen's objection. Something being posted, and then nobody knows if it stays. But um, we had this terrific response from the Twin Cities Public Safety Staff or Emergency Services, I think they called themselves, that I would like to talk. And maybe uh, Doug Brent would like to lead the way as he shared the letter on behalf of the group. Have you sent that to everybody, Donna? Because I, I did. Yeah, I haven't seen it. What I got it. It was attached yeah, to the last email. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it, it, it was there. I, I not a, um, anyone can find it in their stuff and send it to Kim. Jim, you said it was attached to the notice of the meeting. Donna, I'll do it right now. It was a follow-up email because I got it after the agenda went out. So it was a separate attachment. Well, Maybe while Brent, uh, Doug Brent is talking about it, then yeah, I'd I'll, like to hear I'll send it to you. I can find it. Okay. Let me know when you're ready, Donna. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what... Um, well, if... If you want, Donna, it's not that long of a letter. I will gladly read it to the into the record and um, so that everybody hears. It's, it's your choice, though. I was uh, going to suggest that, yeah. Okay. Well, at least the very essence of the recommendations, but certainly if you want to read the whole thing, do it. Okay. So um, as you are, dear distinguished board members, as you are aware, for over two years, the public safety agency heads and city managers for the city of Montpelier and Barry City have been meeting to <laughs> discuss common operational level issues which affect each of the two cities in their provision of emergency services. The current state of our radio communication system has emerged as having the highest impact on public and responder safety. On a daily, on a daily basis, the ongoing radio infrastructure issues and coverage problems that exist plague the delivery of fire, EMS, and police services in both Barry and Montpelier. On Monday, August 30, 2021, the Twin City team consisting of Barry City Manager McKenzie, Deputy Police Chief Eastman, Deputy Fire Chief Allsworth, myself, and Montpelier City Manager Frazier, Police Chief Pete, Deputy Fire Chief Quinn, and Fire Chief Gowans met uh, Doug, you, to you, discuss the Telebate report in its entirety. We felt it was important that our group reach consensus on the report, choose a direction, and notify CBPSA of our position. We met for over two hours and reviewed the Telebate report and the Telebate PowerPoint presentation. The focus of our discussion was based on the system cost and preliminary priority slide number 23 from the Telebate report. The basis for our group's outlook on the recommendations is centered on the statement in the Televate PowerPoint uh, consideration slide number 22, bold and highlighted. Bold and highlighted, communications gaps require immediate attention. This is an issue of safety. Listed below are the recommendations which were supported unanimously by the city managers public, and public safety chiefs from both cities. The recommendations are that we accept the Televate report as submitted utilizing the dual simulcast system concept, slide number 16. We address, well, we recommend to address the upgrades as outlined by priority and cost, slide number 23. Currently address and seek funding for only the priority number ones. It was the feeling of both cities that replacement of the dispatch consoles would be done at the expense of each city, not as part of the regional plan. This leaves a regional plan cost to be funded or a balance of $3,930,000. We also thought support 
greater fire police fire fire and police chief participation on the CVPSA executive board, increase town and department memberships to CVPSA, have CVPSA present their summary report, in other words, the PowerPoint presentation, to a joint meeting of the Barry City and Montpelier City Councils, see the 83021 request from managers McKenzie and Frazier, and have CVPSA develop an acceptable slash equitable fund formula slash scheme for the remainder of the priority number one project components or the $3.93 million. We plan on being present at the upcoming meetings and are glad to give our input as needed to support this extremely important issue. As noted, the final upgrades are broken down as priority one, two, and three. Even though we support acceptance of the entire report, after much consideration and discussion, it was agreed that only the priority number ones should be moved forward at this time. This is a considerable amount of money and the industry derived cost estimates provided by Televate will likely have notable impacts throughout the first responder community. These are good real numbers in today's marketplace based on solid information from third party engineering reports. We are available for comment at your request sincerely and it's uh, signed and okayed by William Frazier, Ryan Pete, Robert Gowans, Larry Eastman, Jim Quinn, Dustin, Timothy Bombardier, and Deputy Chief Joe Allsworth. That, that was our um, report coming out of our meeting on Monday, August number 30. Well, thank you so much for reading that. Uh, even with the, the bubbles in the sound, it really was very good for people to hear it. Kim, I emailed it to you also. I forwarded the email you was that was sent. I too have sent it to him. <clears throat> yeah, I have sent it to him as well. Okay. Thank you both. Make sure you read both of them. <laughs> Might as well read three of them because I sent it too. <laughs> okay. How about comments and discussion? Uh, Paul has his hand up. I really feel that that was an out, outstanding opinion from the chiefs and the city managers. It seems like I've been on this committee for almost a year and that we're all, I never really know what direction we were headed in. This is clear and concise direction as to where we want to go. And I, and I really welcome bringing them in to this because it's, you know, we, that's the people that we need to be helping us decide what we need and which direction we're going. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, Kim. Doug, I think we should include somebody from CFMAS, uh, either Paul Cerruti or delegates to these council meetings because I think it would be good for the whole community to know your position, which I I think is wonderful. I'm glad you're doing it, but I, I think we need to include the towns in, in this. So discussion. Kim, just to let you know, and the rest of the committee, just to let you know, and the rest of the committee, we agree with your, your opinion on that. And the day after we met, so it would have been August the 31st, we had a meeting in Brian Pete's office, myself, Brian Pete, Joe Allsworth and Paul Cerruti to bring them up to speed and to get them into the fold as well. Oh, terrific. So they'll be invited to any meetings that are at the so, city councils. So um, um, I believe that Joe has as Joe's on tonight and Joe is the vice president of the mutual aid, uh, even though he wears two hats because he's on our department as well, obviously. Um, but with his uh, capital fire mutual aid hat, I believe he has a comment relative to that. And I have one other question. Uh, Joe, um, you want to give your comment and then we'll go back to Kim's second question. <clears throat> I've talked with uh, 
Skip Bothfeld, who's the president of Capital Fire. And uh, <clears throat> we have a meeting next week, uh, Wednesday, to discuss the Televate report and that he is going to be uh, coming forward with a, a, a letter and he'll be requesting a, uh, a uh, same type of report from CVPSA and Televate uh, for the fire chiefs and representatives of each of the communities affected. Uh, probably a, a member of their select board. I'll know better, better uh, coming next Wednesday, but you should, uh, Donna, you should look forward to uh, a request. Uh, they would like to do a separate one to make sure it's not uh, convoluting the two projects because they may have some of their own questions for the users group uh, radio system versus the Barry Montpelier system. I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry that I'm going to ask you to repeat part of that. And I, I got this terrible echo going. Is your system off, Stephen? I can turn it on the wire again here. But I, I don't Please. Know. Let me see if I have a mic. Can you hear me? I must be muted. Okay. Um, we'll see if that helps. But I, I was getting somewhat of an echo, Joe, when you were talking. So that you mentioned that they were making a request to towns. I just need that restated so more clearly. So they will be meeting next Wednesday. They will be asking uh, a, a similar presentation to the fire chiefs and a member of their select board from CBPSA and Televate. But that'll come to you, Donna. And so, okay. like I said, I had a conversation with Skip. And so to facilitate that meeting, it'll probably be big enough. We'll have to have an area to do that. And I'm working on that now. So it not only include the fire chiefs from the towns, would it also include the town select board chairs or we, anyone we, else interested? My, my recommendation to uh, Chief Bothfeld was to have the, fire, uh, have the fire chiefs and a representative from the select boards at that meeting. Excellent. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, Doug Hoyt, you had your hand up? Not really, but I guess I would jump in and just ask that apparently, not apparently, one of my responsibilities is this concept of outreach. And it seems like the, Joe and, and other people are doing a lot of things to pull some of that stuff together, but uh, should somebody from the board be present at some of these meetings? And if so, I really don't want to necessarily volunteer myself, but if that's where I should be, then that's where I'll be. Doug Chief. has volunteered himself to be available oh. to Capital West. <laughs> so it would be really good if he could be included. Chief Hoyt, I will make sure that you're part of those meetings. Okay, appreciate it. I would like to be part of those meetings myself. Okay. For the outreach, we have Sally and Doug already attending. So if we add, we add a third person without having a quorum there. Okay. Terrific. I'm looking forward to getting that information. Thank you, Joe and Doug Brent. Uh, Jim Ward, you got your hand up. Yeah, I'm just looking for clarification. Can can I assume or can we assume that the three original proposals have now been consolidated into one or are we still maintaining running parallel tracks on different proposals? I know from what Doug Chief Brent said, it sounds like City of Montpelier and the City of Barry's plan has now been consolidated into a larger one, but is Capital West still running their own proposal on a separate track or where are we? Or not Capital West, Capital Fire Mutual Aid. 
Uh, so, Sally, do you have any input on that? Um, so I think what we said last meeting was that we would give um, time for us to discuss what we were gonna do as far as CVPSA goes and see what the direction was that people were looking at taking. And this fall, we would take a stance on it as far as what we're gonna do, because like I said in the last meeting, I think we wanna be prepared to go to town meeting this coming year um, for people to have um, put money forward. Does that sound right, Joe? Just a question, Shelly. When you say we, you're yes. talking capital fire mutual aid, oh. not capital, not this group. Correct. Okay. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, that, that is correct, Sally. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, anyone else on this topic? Kim, you have your hand up. I have a question for uh, uh, Doug Brent. Um, will the equipment and the the uh, consoles that you're recommending be capable of handling a really uh, first rate CAD? Because it seems to me if we're getting new consoles, they ought to be able to handle a real CAD program. It's just that that's a little premature, and that was part of what the, the Televate uh, study talked about. And indeed, that you you need to have funding to get a serious RFP out. And until you get a serious RFP out, you, you don't have that absolute detail, is my understanding, on the equipment. Well, so that's a that good we're point. not there yet. It certainly is the goal from everything I've heard from everyone is they want whatever we get to be as adaptable to the future as possible. But again, that will happen when you actually do the procurement process. Now, um, Paco had a discussion with Rick. I had one too, but I think his has been the most recent. If uh, Paco is there, I know you had some grandkids around. Have you disappeared, Paco? Uh, I did. I thought the <laughs> grandkids were hidden. <laughs> <laughs> They're never hidden. Well, I mean, because we, oh. we wanted to hear more from, uh, I mean, both Rick and Dominic were very clear that you needed to get your, your money lined up. Then you can put out your RFP, your procurement process. And, and so until we, I think, until we get together and do a real decision about who do we need at the table to make those decisions about the board, the membership, the cost allocation. I think that's even more important and that will lead us into the governance and that whatever institution this finally lands under, that until we at a group can sit and really powwow and say, this is who we want at the table. This is who we have confidence of in the table representing all the groups right now that it seems to be the two cities and the capital of capital of far and mutual aid membership and and when we can we can accept what together who should be at the table making these decisions for the cost allocation for governance then we can decide who owns it does it sit under public safety authority does it sit under some other umbrella who knows i mean i'm not i keep telling you committed that it has to be central vermont public safety authority and I think we ought to get rid of the names and just think about how does this entity function? How can we have faith in it? What do we need to have faith in it? And not worry about where we sit it until we design it. And once we design it, then we can decide, okay, what title, what organization owns it that we operate this group that we've now created? Does that make sense to people? Did I explain it well that you could understand? I, I just think, you know, try not to be entity minded, territorial minded. Just think about it's like the fire chiefs. Obviously, they should be at the table. The, fee, the police chief should be at the table. We've wanted them there as voting members, but it's more than that. So it seems to me part of the working group and the discussion maybe that Doug, when he goes outreach and visiting Sally, also in the outreach, is discussing that. What do people? need to have faith in the people at the table to really empower discussion 
that then we can go to the towns, then we can have people voting on that membership, on that cost allocation, because it's coming from a trusted source. So that's what I feel we need to really work on. Anyone else for next step suggestions? Yay, nay. <laughs> Donna, I don't disagree with that. <clears throat> I just, <clears throat> I don't know what Doug Brent's timetable is. If we're going to go forward at March meeting for new councils and fund them, uh, I agree with you that everybody should be on board as to what's needed on those consoles. And if that's where we're headed, that's fine with me. I, I, obviously, we got to get everybody together and talk about it. I mean, if we could decide who among all of our groups should be at the table, and we all say we're giving these people the authority to act and negotiate <clears> on <throat> behalf, and they really started meeting every couple of weeks, we would know by the 1st of November what we could or could not go to town meeting for, I think. We'd have a much better picture than we do now. But time is of the essence. We, we really need a commitment to start meeting and meet regularly and, and have things happen. Uh, Doug Brent. So I think you just summed it up really well, Donna, in saying that time is of the essence. And I will say this for a couple of reasons. First of all, this equipment, as we've learned, we kind of knew this, but we really learned this from Rick and Dom. This stuff is operating on borrowed time. The next call could be the last one. Um, Fortunately, here in Barrie, our equipment is a tad bit newer than what some of this um, capital and fire mutual aid stuff is, but it's all re yeah. Oh, yeah. really the same vintage stuff. Um, and secondly, guess what? Surprise, surprise. Stuff's not getting cheaper the longer we wait. Um, and um, so... And we all know because we've all heard the stories about computer chips and things and there's brand new cars sitting on the lot at the car manufacturers they just can't get chips for them well guess what every bit of this radio stuff is chip driven um and the manufacturers doesn't matter which brand you talk to they're all waiting for stuff months now so even when we make a decision we might be months out from even getting the stuff delivered Okay, so uh, at the meeting on Wednesday for Capital Farm Mutual Aid, where the FAR chiefs and select boards are coming together, is this the time to try to then have representation from Barrie, the city of Barrie, Montpelier, and Central Vermont Public Safety Authority to really you know, get down and name who should be at the table, confirm, Donna, can I, can I clarify yep. that? So the upcoming Wednesday meeting is on the agenda for them to discuss the Televate report. Okay. And okay. Th then they will be generating what they want to do. I would anticipate a letter coming from Chief Bothfeld uh, requesting a presentation from CVPSA and Televate. Okay. All right, but so it's not, it's not, that's not the meeting for the select board members. No. Okay, okay, all right, so we have another meeting there. Do you think that they can, Capital Far Mutual Aid can meet more than once a month on this? If we, um, if at the Wednesday meeting we make that request at the very least, that we would like to move this forward on a more uh, fast, a little faster pace? I, I'm sure that they'll be amenable to it, uh, and I don't. I know that they were pretty consistent with the time frame to go into town meeting. So if it needs to be moved forward, and Sally could back me up on this or not, yeah. uh, I think I think they're willing to to move on this. Yeah, I mean, we we have said we want this for this coming town meeting, so I don't think that's going to be an issue at all to have an extra meeting. Okay, well, I mean, because part of this ties in, I guess I feel like if you take the Twin Cities team and you add the comparable individuals from 
Capital Fire Mutual Aid from Central Vermont Public Safety Authority and you add Rick Televate to facilitate it, I think something could really come out of that. I think the 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 drip, the gist I got from Chief Boffeld is that he wants to hear it from the horse's mouth, and if there's questions to be asked, he wants to hear their answers. Oh, that definitely. makes sense. Next Wednesday, yes, Rick. Yes, trying to no, get Rick. No, meeting. no, that's not that's not next Wednesday. They will set that meeting up so that the fire chiefs will be there and the select board members of each of the communities will be there. I don't anticipate 100% uh, attendance next Wednesday. Okay, so you, you don't really have a date yet for, for no. Rick to show up. Okay. No, I would anticipate Skip's request to you within the, you know, within the, the end of next week, I would think. Okay, okay, I'll try not to rush it. I want it to happen tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, Paco, maybe you can help me with the flow of this. How do we uh, go from where we are with the discussion we have, which seems where we want to be, and certainly pick up on the extension from uh, Capital Farm Mutual Aid? Yeah, well, one, the one thing that jumps out at me uh, right now is the issue of where we want to go, where we want to be. And the big thing is, who's the we? Mm -hmm. Uh, CBPSA uh, has not been charged by its membership to accomplish anything at this point. So I think having that said, uh, hearing from Capital Fire at one of their upcoming meetings and hearing from the city councils is very important to how we move forward. Uh, having that said, there's a couple of things from the uh, letter that Doug Brent read that's, that's very important uh, uh, in terms of moving forward. The whole letter is very important, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actionable items uh, for CVPSA, one, the Twin Cities group are recommending that other towns be members of CVPSA. And the other actionable item that's immediate is to come up with a formula scheme that can help um, identify how uh, this project is going to be funding. So having that said, my recommendation in terms of moving forward is to uh, put a small working group together, primarily made up of, of of staff people with a representative from CVPSA, but that, that work, this working group is to hit the ground running and start charting a course for actionable items and then come back to CVPSA. Hopefully the timing will be around when CVPSA meets with the uh, city councils so that CVPSA can say, here's where we want to be going and will you bless this plan? Mm. So, um, and uh, how, how, how you do that, um, how, how you facilitate this discussion. Um, well, somebody would have to have to be appointed chair. Now I will say that uh, one of the things that's going to come out of this that already is bubbling up is the issue of governance. And uh, I think governance, as we all know, is, is, is very important. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to be the first thing that is, is, is done, but it does have to be at the top of the list uh, in terms of, of resolving uh, the issue. It certainly has to be resolved by the time you put together any RFP, you mm -hmm. develop a funding source uh, to, to, to move forward. Now, um, I had uh, spoken with Rick earlier this week and, and uh, uh, Televate is willing to put together some cost range uh, proposal from uh, anything from help, helping the group through coaching right through to actually rewriting or writing bylaws. Uh, so the point is, is, is that Rick Burke and Televate 
uh, is interested in staying involved if that's the direction uh, this body wants to go. And I see Rick is on the phone tonight. Uh, I mean, on the game call tonight. So maybe he wants to chime in at this point. By all means, Rick, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, hey, um, you know, we, we are invested in this uh, project the same as you all are. Uh, love to, you know, to continue to support you to, you know, to a, success, a successful conclusion and implementation. So, um, you know, however we can help um, and whatever you need from us, you know, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity to be continuing to, to continue our engagement. So um, uh, we'll be responsive to your request and, um, you know, available to uh, attend meetings and, and answer questions from, uh, you know, whatever source and whomever they come from. So, uh, yeah, I, I think we've, you know, you, it, we've come a long way um, since we began and you all are, uh, um, you know, making great progress. So, so yes, thanks for, uh, for asking me to, to, to talk and just let me know what you need from me. Uh, but Donna, one one other one other uh, item I wanted to mention uh, th this this idea of a small working group is 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 intended to be a a prelude to the uh, next step suggestions that Televate uh, named. All of the committees that were identified in the Televate report are are very important, but more importantly is the functions that those committees represent. And those functions have to be uh, uh, discussed and we have to, CBPSA and the Twin Cities and Capital Fire has to make a decision as to, to how those functions will be properly staffed so that they can, they can be worked on. Um, so again, then my idea of a, of a small working group is nothing more than to identify tasks to get things moving and also to to solidify the we uh, being in agreement that's the public safety folks between capital fire um, the two cities and CVPSA um, I, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking of in the back of my mind a proposal of asking the board to approve some additional hours for Paco his current contract is sort of done um, that maybe like 20 hours is to start with um, some thousand dollars right um, that indeed then to work with this small working group that you could reach out I, I'm seeing Paco reaching out to form a, what he feels and interview people for a small working group make a proposal back to the board and to everyone else of this group and then give it some initial ownership of facilitating that until we are in a place then to look at whether or not we can afford something with uh, Televate doing it. Does that make sense, Paco, to you? Or do you have some other suggestions? To get no, this uh, I, I, no that, that makes sense to me. Uh, you remember we, we did already sign a, an addendum to the original contract and I think I probably have uh, 12, maybe 15 hours left on that. Woo! Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, pro probably after tonight's meeting, 12 hours. But uh, so I, I'm 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 opening open to uh, um, working with you to move this forward. Now, my my idea uh, centers around putting together this working group and ferreting out the issues, documenting those issues, and then bringing them back before the uh, CVPSA board for action of the board. Um, and those issues might be a discussion about how, how, do, we, how do we move forward with uh, uh, getting more towns involved? What are the tasks associated with that? And then what's, what, are, what are the recommendations for a funding scheme? You know, I did a lot of work historically on uh, different formulas for funding. Uh, Capital Fire has an established uh, funding source for uh, funding formula for the dispatching uh, contract with Montpelier. And of course they did a very simplified uh, 
cost formula for the simulcast um, system they had. Uh, I can I will tell you that if if we were to to uh, just if we were to assume a 3.9 million dollar project. Uh, over 10 years on a 10 year bond and there were 24 entities involved, just a straight uh, calculation. That means a little over $16,000 a year commitment from each of those 24 entities. Is that fair? I mean, I, I don't know. I am just, I'm just throwing that out. That type of uh, uh, formula was used by the, when the uh, capital fire tried to articulate the cost of the $300,000 simulcast system, so. I like your example, but I don't wanna get into the weeds of that example, <laughs> uh, because that's what we're trying to do with first find out who comes to the table, then to start the conversation. Uh, Jim, did your hand go up? And then Kim. Yeah, yeah. Kim, I was thinking of this before Paco mentioned it, but since you did, I, I wanna just get the answer to it. So much seems to ride on, on our funding source. And I know Sally mentioned that they wanted to be ready to go to town meeting. Do we have any kind of definitive timetable of when we're going to get a notice or denial or approval or, or some kind of indication of whether that grant is going through? Uh, I'm sorry, are you talking about the earmark? I, I'm assuming that's the, what, what the, the no, lady, funding source is. No, no, not at all. Uh, Leahy definitely said no for this year and that we could apply next year. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't and, catch that. Yeah. And Sanders didn't seem to give our application any attention. And maybe okay. other people around the table know the right people to call. So but, we've moved on to the funding source being municipal um, grants, uh, municipal, municipal bonds. Municipal and state. I mean, that's part of, you know, uh, yes is okay. looking at that and trying to also, because the cities and towns monies are coming in like four installments, two this year and two next year. And so mm -hmm. likewise, as it comes in, they're gonna be making decisions. So this is definitely one we wanna get on the table for all the towns to think about with some of their rescue money. Okay, Thank federal you. dollars. Does that make sense? Jim? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just hadn't Kim heard Kane. that we'd got a definitive no from Leahy. Uh, I apologize. That I didn't get that email. Uh, one of the things we did, I mean, we did put in a uh, reduced application, but they said no, that they had just already had moved on everything. And that was my misunderstanding. I thought I apologized to all of you because I really thought uh, I misunderstood what Diane was saying and that indeed they moved right away. So even the reduced application, they didn't look at because one was the definitions, maybe this will ring some bells, the definition, it had to fit better fit law enforcement. And so the only thing within our application to Leahy that was strictly law enforcement was the consuls. Yeah. But, and so we resubmitted that, but then we turned out, she said, no, I'm sorry, you're just, we just can't consent you this year. You but, may have covered it at the last meeting and I was I didn't catch the whole last meeting. So well, uh, there's a lot of flying parts. But one of the other things that came out of that is Paco create a very reduced um, profile uh, that taking Leahy's the larger piece and more simplified it so that we could share it with towns without overwhelming them of this long application. And I'll make sure that I put that out to everybody to look at. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll Donna, resend it. Donna? Yep. Donna, you have two hands up. Kim first and Steve McKenzie second. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Stephen. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kim Cheney, go ahead. Donna, I would just like to move that you uh, consult with Paco and work out a contract for continued involvement as he described. Well, we have one. And so if the, you made that motion just to add 20 hours, we do it like in 20 hour increments, we're controlling our money. We're down to having uh, a total of like less than $40,000 after we pay everything out the door. Uh, well, that was my concern. I, I think to be fair to Paco, we have to figure out what he can do and how much time he thinks it'll take. Well, in my, in it... my conversation with him, and Paco, correct me, uh, that he's definitely interested in continuing. And I, 
don't know if he'd like a larger contract, certainly speak up, or if you can deal with 20 hours now and 20 hours tomorrow. <laughs> Well, Donna, I'm 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 aware that uh, CVPSA has does not have an infinite budget. The budget is finite, and I gotta believe until uh, next fiscal year that that the monies that are remaining are depleting. So, uh, yes, I want to uh, remain. I'm willing to uh, uh, do the work in in twenty hour uh, uh, imp components or less. Um, in other words, I, I'm willing to say, let's not write a new contract yet, or let's not write an amendment. Uh, let me work with you and use the uh, hours that I have left on the existing contract and see where it goes. Okay, well, that satisfies me as long as Paco's happy. Maybe my motion is simply to approve uh, Continuing Paco at 20 hour increments. Does anybody want to second that? I think it's already taken care of with the existing contract. Yes, no? Well, we have 12 hours left on the existing contract. We, we The board extended the 20, yes. So Kim's motion is to add another 20 to the existing 12. I'll second, I'll second that. that. Aha, Sally beat you. <laughs> oh, <pardon. laughs> any, any further discussion on that? And I, I know, Steve, uh, you still have your hand up. And Kim, would you took your hand down? You've got your um, yep, thank you. system hand up. I know it's hard to remember. I, 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 oh, I can't see you, Steve. I'm sorry. You disappeared. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, you want to say? I have two questions. Uh, can I answer now? Or are you in the middle of a motion? Uh, we have a motion, and I ask if there was any further discussion of the motion. Yeah, my, okay, my so wait. Are, are, are okay, right so relating to the motion of adding 20 hours to Paco's current contract, all in favor say aye, wave your hand. Aye. 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 Any object, objections? Thank you. And now I, Steve McKenzie had his hand up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't. I don't want to be the skunk at the party, but uh, there's from from the very city side. I'm assuming the Montpelier side as well. Um, we've we've worked to help um, set direction with the memo that uh, Doug spearheaded and others uh, helped uh, tweak and refine. But. <clears throat> Uh, as as we've been as we've been talking, or as folks have been talking, I've been thinking through the the process and the approach. So, what um, the recommendation from the Twin Cities group was that we ha we have the a joint we arrange a joint presentation uh, or a presentation to a joint council meeting, and the target date that uh, Bill and I picked um, was October or is October twentieth um which is still a little bit off we we picked that due to the existing council schedules that we have or agendas between now and then um as i was thinking about that and i haven't even had haven't this thought only occurred to me tonight i haven't uh, had a chance to discuss it with the uh, doug or the berry team i'm really thinking that the berry team actually needs to have a pre-meeting with the city council before um the joint presentation on the 20th uh, because for all intents and purposes um the berry council um uh, probably knows little to anything about um uh the i'll say the, the, the what's been going on for the last two years a lot of the you know most of the members are new they don't have a long history um so and and as i've Frankly, it's a it is a new council. Um, I mean, a number of months old, but uh, I'm I'm getting to learn the council better, and I know that if we just land on their desk on the twentieth with a fairly comprehensive briefing, they're going to 
they're not going to be receptive to making any kind of decisions that evening. And I don't know that we're asking them to, but I think um, it's prudent from our side to begin to get our council up to speed. So, so that's one thing um, I've got to work on with uh, Doug and Joe. Um, uh, I have, I did send them the whole Televate report and the presentation, I think, I've lost track already a week or 10 days ago. I just said, very comprehensive report, an awful lot of reading. Uh, we'll be coming uh, to make a presentation at some time in the future. I don't think we had the date established. So they've had it, but, but receiving a 111 page report is pretty daunting. Um, I haven't, the, the uh, Twin Cities memo just got published. What was it, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday Doug? Uh, I will be I'll be distributing that to the council this weekend in my manager's report. So I, we've got some preparatory work to do at our end. But but we've also I, I, I apologize if I'm sort of repeating, but I just maybe reinforcing that uh, a big part of this is really defining the project of projects and the recommendation from the Twin Cities group is we've essentially, there are essentially, I'll say two projects. One is uh, purchasing of the consoles uh, with the two cities. That's one piece. And then the other is the 3.9 million. <clears throat> so for the municipalities, there's, there's two, uh, there's two funding pieces of the puzzle to put together. Um, um, Frankly, probably couldn't come at a worse time for Bury City. I, um, I'm going to be doing a lot more homework on ARPA funding. Uh, I don't know whether that will provide a source of funding or not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Frankly, I'm not optimistic at this point, but I could be wrong. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the budget pressures on Bury City for, for this coming year are are great. Um, we have staffing needs that we're trying to work with uh, in, in the city administration that I don't know if we can even fund those positions. So uh, th there's a lot of homework for us to do on the very city side. And um, having a working group help forge the direction of the projects and funding concepts and, and things like that is critically important. Uh, and it, and it, March seems like a long time away, but it's not. I mean, frankly, it's not March. I mean, it's got to be done by January. January. Yeah. yeah, it's January. End of January. Yeah. So. Um, so are, are you saying that you're going to propose to move back the joint council meeting maybe to the 1st of November? No, 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 no. I, I think the 20th is a good date. I mean, I, okay. frankly, if I, if, I, if I thought it was feasible, I'd even move it up to, to earlier in November, but I'm not sure that that's possible. All I was trying to say is, and maybe the 20th is good for us because I've just come to realize I have sort of had a chance to give some thought to this listening in the meeting. And, and since the memo went out uh, Wednesday um, in order, in order to be fair, if that's the right word with our council, we, I've got some homework. I've, we've got some homework and some, uh, some preparation to do on our side before the meeting on the 20th. Um, Bill, from Bill's end, he may not feel the same way because he's had uh, both you, Donna, and at least up to uh, whatever, a month or so ago. Um, oh, I'm forgetting his Dan, name. Just, Dan Richardson. Dan, yeah, Dan, as, as both counselors and representatives. So probably had more opportunity to keep the council your council up to speed. Well, we've so, got a lot of uh, new members too, though. It's a point well taken. Yes. yes. So, I mean, we, we all need to do homework, which to me helps give a lot of energy back to the essential needs of that small working group. And Yeah, I guess uh, that, that was a long version of saying, I need to get our council engaged again. And I think anyone around this board of uh, we definitely are available to whatever level we can help you do that. But yeah, with okay. Joe and Brent, you're <laughs> Doug, Brent, and Joe, you're covered. <laughs> All the expertise. Okay, so in, in 
just looking at the agenda. Uh, uh, Rick, anything else that you want to contribute? I want to make good use of your time while you're online. Oops, I caught him when he's sleeping. <laughs> no, I was, uh, no, I didn't know I was. Um, no, I'm good. I, I, I just need to, uh, as soon as, you know, reasonably possible, we could confirm dates so I can be sure that I've cleared my calendar, um, you know, for when I may be needed to uh, to answer questions and to participate and make a presentation. That's, that's all I'm going to need for my end. Yeah, I think, uh, Rick, this is Steve McKenzie. I think the, 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 the right now the date I'd put in your calendar would be the 20th. Yes. For, for a joint meeting with Barry City and Barry uh, in Montpelier. Okay. Uh, I don't know about other dates, but that's one I think we can lock down with a high degree of certainty. All right. Uh, and, and, and I guess the other point. Is that September 20th or October 20th? October 20th. October. All right. Okay. I'm giving you a little time. All right. Do you have a time frame? Uh, what time? Well, it would be uh, while our council meeting started uh, seven. This is going to be joint. It actually would probably be in Montpelier. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Montpelier Council Chamber, uh, City Hall. Okay. Uh, and I think what we were contemplating is that it would, and we're not in a position to make this commitment, but it would be a, a team that I think that we were thinking of would be Paco um, and, and you, Rick, and, and, and I'm sorry, I forgot your partner's name. Don. Don. Um, yeah. uh, along with, you know, Donna and or others uh, from the board who could be there, but I think you folks are the best mm. equipped to make the presentation. As, as concisely as can be made. Um, and we can work with you on that. I mean, the reality is, uh, you know, I'd say a, a half an hour tops to make the presentation, yeah. however long it goes with with, uh, with questions and answers is another beyond your control, but, but um, uh, uh, a half an hour is probably the, the tops before you lose everybody. Understood, sir. Well, we can coordinate more on that, but I was, Yes. Uh, Likewise, I was thinking it's so important to have uh, the, the experience far chief and staff and so that we get people who really talk about what their real day to day crises are and could possibly be worse uh, so that they really can relate to it in real real terms of day to day. Yeah, I mean, the, rea the reality is there's no even even I as manager. I mean, I don't have the sensitivity to the the concerns uh, that Doug and Joe have with our existing system. I mean, we don't right. we don't deal with it every day. Yeah. Um, so, and if and if I'm not feeling it, if you will, you can imagine where the council's. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's that's good. October twentieth. Everybody, underline that. Big and bold. Paul's got a question. Okay, Paul. There we go. Okay. Um, there's really two things. I I see tonight that we're all headed in the direction that we need to move forward and disseminate this information out to our other partners that are going to have to go to their select boards and governing bodies. And one of the things that I think we need to discuss is that if we as a group support the Twin City letter that Doug read tonight, because I that's where I, that's where I stand too is let's take this one palatable bite at a time. So let's move forward with phase one. And the second part of it is I'm going to make as a motion is I make a motion that we send Doug Hoyt as our representative to these outlying partners in Capital Fire because of his history with them running Capital West for so long. These are people that trust him. And, and so I'm going to make that a motion. Okay, second. I'll second. Are 
I was trying to, to put that into the minute. I mean, my motion, your motion into words, and I didn't catch it all, but that you would be appointing Doug to representatives in all the future meetings related. As this, the outreach committee is going yes. out to, yes. to these departments or the, or the Capital Fire Mutual Aid Association. And, and I would like Doug to represent us. Did I say our spokesperson? Yes. Sally, you would go okay with that? Oh, as yes, yeah, the, yeah, the friendly amendment, yes. I mean, Sally, certainly on the outreach committee, Doug is a chair, but I think it's good to have one key spokesperson that doesn't put Sally in the bind of representing two at the same time. Um, does that make sense, Sally? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and second to that motion. I'll okay. second it. Thank you, Kim Cheney. Any further discussion on that appointment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Terrific. Thanks for the motion and thanks for the acceptance, Doug Hoyt. <laughs> now stay well so you can do a good job. <laughs> We gotta all stay healthy and sorry about Paul, but you know, it can happen, it has, has happened to many of us and it can happen to anybody. So everybody's Donna? well. Yes, Stephen. I think there was a second part to Paul's. Uh, oh, it was, uh, yes, which, you're right. Which, which was to make a, a, a motion or to accept or either the recommendation, accept or not accept the recommendations of the uh, Twin Cities Committee as, as a, source document for direction if i got that right paul no i i had not included that in the motion but i oh, said no, i, I think it's supposed... something that we need to discuss tonight is where do we stand in relationship to that letter yeah that's a great point okay so do you want to make it a motion because uh he's right Cer I mean... certainly i i make a motion that we that we accept and and back up i don't know how you want to word that that we uh no, our endorsement, endorsement behind the letter from the Twin Cities, and and that is the message that you know that Doug and Paco and 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 Sally and and the outreach committee. That is the message that they're bringing to these other um, entities when we explain what we're looking at buying. You might. You know, you what's might. this thing going to look like? Well, now we have a really good idea what it's going to look like. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would add to it is that it's really important that we have a solid working group that has that every, every everybody has faith in, and that, and that would be the one addition I would make to their recommendations, is that we have this solid, supportive working group that everybody buys into. Donna, my, my suggestion would be to maybe do that in two parts. So just the first motion would be, if this is what the board chooses to do, accept the recommendations of the Twin City uh, memo, if that's the right word, uh, accept, the, accept the recommendations of the Twin City group as a path forward for implementation. Yeah. And just, and leave it at that. That's, accept, accept the hopefully recommendation of, of the Twin City yeah. team yep. as a path forward. For implementation. Implementation, okay. Yeah. Donna, I agree with that. I think, as you pointed out, um, it's the beginning, and we need to get a broader group to figure out exactly where we're going. So that's a second to uh, Jim's motion? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Further Hang discussion? On. I think. Yeah. Well, it was Paul. It was Paul that moved that, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought Jim was modifying it. So, no, Paul, I, uh, Steve, no, was made a discussion between Paul's. discussion okay. between Steve and, and Paul about okay. that. I mean, I I, I kind of reworded it, hopefully to simplify it, but it was Paul's motion. If if, if you don't mind, Paul. Okay. <laughs> So are we talking about acceptance or are we talking about endorsement? Well, the, word, the words I've written down that I understand the motion is that the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority Board accepts the recommendation of the Twin City team 
for implementation. That's just a path going, going forward. forward. Nothing what? about endorsement. So do you want to make an, a friendly amendment or discussion about endorsement? I, I want to discuss it. No, I just I just want it clear that we you know what direction we're headed in. We're looking at doing phase one, and and let that be the piece that they bring out to the different towns and the different select boards, and let's begin implementing that part of it unless they accept and endorse i think you need the, the endorse to show our strength behind it that's how we're, we're gonna that's gonna be our path too i'm okay with that wording okay and i had kim cheney as second and you're comfortable with that wording well I like the acceptance. I think Steve McKenzie had some good points. There's, and you did. There's a lot more to how this is going to work out. I, I think it's a wonderful move of the Twin Cities, and I'm fully behind it. I, I I'm, I'm just wordsmithing this word indoors. I just don't think it's a full endorse. story. I'd rather accept. It, it's not the full story. There's more to it, but. Right. Within this letter, it's one of our pieces that we're endorsing or not. What's the group's pleasure? Can I suggest an alternative wording that might incorporate yes. everyone? Go ahead. What if we just say that we adopt the recommendations as a pass full path forward that was of the uh, Twin City Committee? You know, we're adopting them is what we're discussing. Endorsing, accepting could be confusing. Um, but we are, I think Paul's suggesting that we adopt the recommendation as a path forward, right? I just need agreement. Paul, which are you more comfortable with? <laughs> I, I really don't know. I'm not a wordsmith, Can I speak to but, but I agree with what's in that letter. I think <laughs> that is our path forward and, I, and that is what is the, the crux of this motion. The word that we're going to put out from here is, is this what we're looking to do? Is this our path forward? Well, let's say accept and endorse. Let's be bold. That's what you mean. Let's put it to a vote. Okay. So the, the motion reading right now being presented is that the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority Board accepts and endorses the recommendations from the Twin City team as a pathway forward for implementation. All in favor say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, well, there really was a board discussion, Steve. It was about the motion, but Steve would like to say something now. I'm sorry, I missed you. Uh, yeah. Can, can you all hear me? So I'm concerned that we haven't had any analysis from uh, the consultant, Rick and, and Dom, uh, on what are the implications towards an overall system engineering approach that they've recommended to narrow the scope. I don't find a, a phase one or a priority one uh, breakout. So I'm kind of interested in inquiring as to what's being left out uh, of the scope of the letter, what's being uh, kicked down the road for another day. And because I've already, I mean, I've refrained from speaking uh, last meeting when the Televate report was uh, offered just because the good in it outweighed what's missing. But we continue to be missing uh, failover, resiliency engineering, uh, LTE integration and a PSAP design with PSAP failover. So to further narrow that scope here without even understanding to what degree we're narrowing it, I think is premature. I think you, there needs to be some engineering analysis of the impacts on a long-term strategy of in effect, narrowing our scope to what's in that letter. 
Okay. Well, I'm not criticizing the letter because I don't fully understand its implications yet, but I would, I need, I need some help understanding its implications. And I don't, I think we're moving uh, recklessly fast here. To, to, right. defend, so, to defend my motion, yes. to defend my motion, motion, you are looking at a filet mignon budget and we have oh, a hamburger. Oh, 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 I can hear you. I can see your mouth moving, but I can't hear you. Well, that's because you two are both on the air at the same time oh. and you're getting echoes. Yes, okay. Stephen, turn your off. What Thank we you. are looking at and what, and what the memo really is bringing to light is that this is going to be a big enough bite to swallow at one time. We do not have an unlimited budget. And we got to sell this to the voters. Okay, Steve McKenzie, you still have your auto hand up? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh, speaking to Steve, um, uh, Steve Whitaker's comment. I, I think the best way to try to answer your question, Steve, is to look at the um, component, the, I'll say the a la carte menu on page 23 of the Televate report that has the listing of priorities and the breakout of costs and the essence of the uh, Twin Cities report was to say, uh, move ahead with uh, just the number one priorities. There were four and of those, Barry City and Mont Barry City and Montpelier would look to um, implement the console portion of that, implement and fund the console portion of that. I don't know if that helps at all, but that's, well, that's a no no brainer. What else is getting left out though? Oh, okay, well, there... I, I, I'm not going to go and discuss the report right now. Okay, you made a statement, but it's what missing. I'm going back to the motion Wait. on the floor. Has the motion been seconded? Yes, it has. Yes. I'd like I'll to call, call the question, question, please. Call the question. Okay. So all those in favor of accepting this motion to accept and endorse this Twin City Teams letter, say aye. 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 All opposed? It passes. Oh, very good. All right. Moving right along here. Um, it's 746. We got almost, you know, 15 minutes of what's left on the agenda. Um, one of the things on the Talibat report was about working groups. And though all those factors need to be dealt with, I think that it spreads us all too thin. And at this point, I think it's better to go back and just focus on the small group and that we actually can form a consensus of how to move forward and, and how to deal with who's at the table, who makes the decisions and start looking at using some experts to help us do some cost allocation studies once that small group is really established. Anyone else would like to spend any time on the working groups? I'm more or less saying, I think we should just- Donna, you, you skip were- over it. The agenda called for discussing of a uh, governance committee. That's one of the working groups. There were five of them. Yeah. And I would like to be on that committee and I would like to work with board members to pull in other players so that we, we form a group to think about governance. And well, but, a... uh, Kim, I, I think uh, what we've what we've so far established, my understanding group, correct me, is that we have a small working group that initially is going to help us decide who should be around the table to then develop a governance model, develop a formula until we have that group, then to have a secondary group do that without the, the support of those being the right people to make the decision, I, I think is faulty. That we need okay. to do this very carefully as who's at the table making the decisions. I, Donna, I agree that that's critical, but the, 
the question, there are a lot of options on how we can organize uh, incorporating the towns into the decision process so that they're a real part of CVPSA or its governance. That's right. And once we have established that core group, then you, you and others can bring their ideas to that group. But well, uh, I think we don't... need to. The, the membership of the towns really has expired and they need to come to grips with their membership. And I think we need to, I agree with you, this is a, a, a major consideration, but I think there should be a committee of this board that at least has responsibility for working on that. And I've talked with several people about different solutions. Um, and I don't claim to have any path forward, but I, I can see there's a lot of people that need to be talked to about how this is going to work. And I think it should be a committee of this board, as you outlined in your agenda, that uh, would be responsible for following <laughs> that up. Do not delegate that. No, because well, I, that is not what we've discussed so far, Kim, that we've actually said we're trying to get rid of, I'm going to call the entity labels. And by first starting with this initial working group to help us decide who should be the core group that is everyone's rep appointed representative that groups will have their faith in and give them authority to then start working on governance, cost allocation. And then we feed into that through our representative in that core group. But it's not the Public Safety Authority Board sitting over here and deciding governance, because that leaves other people out. We need them at the table making that decision, that core group. Of course. So, of course, it has to include everybody. OK, uh, Doug Hoyt. Yeah, I guess I'd like to interject from my perspective that we've been given a couple of different blueprints on, on how to move forward. Uh, number one, we've got Rick Burke and Televate. They've given us a very large blueprint on what the future could look like uh, and what the potential costs are. But today, uh, or within the last few days, we've all been given another blueprint that comes from the Twin City working public safety folks. And I think that's the best thing that has happened in this process, notwithstanding the great work by Televate. Um, and Joe pointed, Joe also pointed out that there's, there's, there's meetings and that we're gonna, I'm gonna get invited. I'm gonna go to it. So it looks like there's a path forward for that particular type of communication to put all of the groups together in the same place. I think we've got to get buy-in by all the people, especially those in, in the capital fire mutual aid system. Uh, it looks like we've got some buy-in that's coming from Barry and Montpelier, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's all, let's let this part play out. Let's get the groups together, let them sit down, let them talk, let them come to an agreement. And then we can do the things that even Steve Whitaker points out that we need to question. This is not a final design. There's nothing being spent other than time and energy. But I think we get everybody to buy into it so that we can move forward and deal with those issues that are occurring, not only in Barry and Montpelier, but also occurring in all of Washington County and a little bit beyond. So. I think we're there, just let's just let it happen. Yes, in that direction, the more buy-in, the more potential membership and enthusiasm for the whole regional approach. Right. Uh, Stephen I mean, McKenzie, your hand went up. 
He's muted. Sorry. Uh, picking up on something uh, Doug said with respect to buy-in, I, I guess I want to be perfectly clear. Um, you've got buy, I think it's fair to say you've got buy-in from the Twin Cities group, but that doesn't mean you've got buy-in from the Berry City Council yet, and I certainly can't speak for my payer, but um, no, I, 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 don't want, I don't want anybody to proceed assuming this is a slam dunk in Berry. I think it's a, I think just because of the funding challenges, um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't speak for the council, and I know we we've, we've got challenges ahead. So I just wanted to be, be clear about, about buy about buying. Uh, I understand that, Steve. Yeah. I I personally understand that and recognize that, which is why I've underscored that we've got a blueprint. We'll, we'll yeah. Get together. Right. And we'll discuss it. I, I realize that councils don't automatically show up on board. But to have the blueprint, just having, if we can get a nod from people, I mean, funding may be further down the road than we want, but to get the vision out there is huge. So I think in that way, the blueprint yeah. is essential. My point exactly. Uh, you know, let's, let's move on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and I guess likewise, um, as far as committee reports, outreach certainly has their homework ahead of them. Uh, Jim, the charter, uh, maybe at some point you could just call a meeting this next month and do some, just, you know, what I call fine tuning of what we have and see incorporating my comments and others that you've got um, that would be helpful. Uh, we may or may not decide to submit it, but it would be good to at least look at, look at it, I think. Uh, out the uh, website, Brent and I have met Brent Householder, and he, he's a little slower getting things done on the website, but he does have his to-do list. And one thing that I think has been successful is his link into the YouTube of our meetings that Orca is doing. And Orca is here tonight. Thank them so much. If they don't get a notice from me, they reach out, remind me. It's really important that we have that public availability of our meetings. So again, thank you, Orca. And anything else that people would like to talk about before we close the meeting? Okay. Well, but, yeah, I'd like to make sure that those uh, working group meetings are held in accordance with open meeting law. Of course. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for your contributions. Been very valuable. Very valuable. Good evening. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.